says in Ecclesiastes 7, 8, the end of a matter is better than its beginning. Well, we're at the end. Hallelujah. Here then is the end of the matter. Romans 8, 29. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his son. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The end of the matter is we look, we're, we're restored to that place where we are truly in the image of God once again, looking just like Jesus. And that is the evidence of a redeemed life. Because the evidence of a redeemed life, ultimately, is to look like Jesus. That starts now, if we can say like the Apostle Paul did, I've been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. Galatians 2.20 That's the evidence of a redeemed life, looking like Jesus Christ. We have to be able, if we're going to examine ourselves and look for that evidence of a redeemed life, we have to be able to see, we have to be able to see Christ in us. Just as the Father does. Yes. And He does. And the world should not see us as best as good Christians, but they should be able to see the love of God and the work of Christ in us redeemed and sanctified sinners. Because it's not condemnation to them, it's encouragement to them to new life. Jesus said, I didn't come into the world to condemn the world, he came into the world to save. So, you know, the reason that we're seeking to be Christ-like and have to bring the presence of Christ is because God desires that none should perish. That's, that's his desire, right? When we look at our own selves, we have to look to ourselves different than we did before. New eyes. Well, I mean, if I look at myself, I should be different than I was last week. I should be different. Most assuredly, I need to be different than I was before I was saved. That's right. And I want to tell you, and I don't say this boastfully because it is the work of Christ. I am, a, I am, I'm not the same guy just cleaned up. I am a new creation in Christ oh. Jesus. Hallelujah. I am different than I was. But even having said that, I need to be different tomorrow than I am today. Because God's promise to me is that he will transform me and bring me from glory to glory. The calling of God is an upward calling. It is constantly going on in my life. For it is God, Paul says, who is at work in you, both to work and to will for his good pleasure. Philippians 2.13. It's God working. He's the potter. We're the clay. He's, he's constantly molding and shaping, perfecting us, bringing us up to that place. To the world, we should look different from them. And they should be able to say, there's something about me. They should, they should absolutely see something different in they us. They won't know what it is. Well, then hopefully they'll ask. That's exactly right. Yes. But they should yeah. see something different. They have to see something different. Otherwise, we need to really examine and see Know, what's going on that they don't see a difference in me? Think about this. Again, I'll go back to Paul writing in 2 Corinthians. He said, Do not be bound together with unbelievers. For what partnership have righteousness and lawlessness? What fellowship has light with darkness? Or what harmony has Christ with Belial? What has a believer in common with an unbeliever? Or what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God. Just as God said, I will dwell in them and walk among them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. What has a believer in common with an unbeliever? We should not walk like them. We should not talk like them. We don't love like them. We should walk, talk, and love like Jesus Christ. For you were formerly darkness. Me. I was formerly darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light, Ephesians 5.8. That's been the purpose of this particular study, to help us to walk as children of the light, to be different, to walk different, to talk different, to live and love different than the world does. And I know we mentioned this in one of the, one of the sessions we did, 
You know, we shouldn't have to go out and struggle to evangelize. People should see what we have that they don't have, that we have joy when they can't begin to have joy, that we have peace when they are so troubled, that we have gentleness when all they want to do is strike out. They should see this fruit of the Holy Spirit, not our fruit, but his fruit in us. And they should be drawn to that and say, what is that? Where do you get it? Where can I get it? Like the jailer said to Paul, what must I do to be saved? God wants to use you. God wants to use me to be that true presence of him in this dark, dying world. Amen. Examine yourself and see if you are bearing that evidence of God's redemption in you. And if you're not, there's an answer. Repent. Change your mind and say, here I am, Lord. Have your own way. I surrender all. I surrender.